The Nose, November 7th, 1998. Roses are red, violets are blue, everything's possible, nothing is true. They're like little love notes. Who issued them? Learning, that's your department. My civilian auxiliary lads found them on various layabouts. They rounded up this morning. I love the rain, I love the moon, I love the wind and stars. Work of a nutcase. Country's going barmy. You know, there's food riots in Manchester over a bloody computer error. I'd love to visit you quite soon and kiss you through the bars. What's it mean? It means trouble, son. Times like these, a bloke needs to know who his friends are. Take you, now acting head of the nose since Baldy disappeared. Dodgy position. Things around here could change overnight. Overnight. Of course, the leader's marvelous, but, well, if anything happened, who'd fill the void? Have to consider these things, eh? You know, I never cottoned to Finch, but I could cotton to you. Maybe our departments could cooperate more in future, perhaps. I love you, but why must you love the law? It's plain for all to see that she's a whore. That's... Virtuous persons have no need to woo that villainous screw that studiously ignore. <laughs> Quite funny, that. Uh, can you find your own way out? Chapter 3. Various Valentines. Organizations of protest against the shootings, eh? A wolf sling the little gobshit in the wagon with the rest. Can you not see I'm on my lunch break? Morning, Allie. Keep it busy. Aye, uh, it's a doodle. All the thug's money for damaging some pure bastard and tacking Arthur Mooses in the strip search. Use coppers are clever bastards keeping these numbers to yourself. <laughs> well, play your cards right. Your lads could have regular work here. I like your style, and with things how they are, a little auxiliary force could come in very handy. Say, for example, I offered 400 a week. I mean, for that, I don't want your guaranteed loyalty. If push came to shove, understand what I'm saying? I think I might have an inkling. Well, think on. I could promise good prospects in any system that might develop, you know, if push come to shove. See, things are precarious, apparently. They've had power failures in Liverpool. If that happened here, I I bother. For 400 quid, you're my full support. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off already? Not pursuing other business interests, I hope. Nah, it's just this bird. Less than I found some mare. Oh, they letters you better have them take a look at. See you later, all right? Hello, missus. I got your message. Sorry I'm late and all that. In future, you'll be punctual. I don't like waiting. Do you know who I am? I, you're the missus of that bloke red right in the eye. And you're running Creedy Civilian Auxiliary Force. You know? He's planning a coup. He wants to be the leader. Ah, well, I wouldn't know nothing about all that. Don't play dumb. This is a straightforward business decision. Creedy wants to be leader. I want Conrad to be leader. How much is he paying you? Well, I'm getting 500 at present. Really? I'd have thought 400 maximum. I'm prepared to offer six, plus an increase upon your thug's current wages. You don't piss about, do you? What's my job? And carry on working for Creedy? Drawing his wages, but reporting to me. And when the time comes... You remember who you're really working for. Look, I'm not aggravating the polis creedies running the finger. Harper, do as I say, and you will soon be running the finger. Don't worry about Creedy. He's in a hazardous occupation. Look at what happened to his predecessor. Derek. Derek, you were useless, then you died, that's all. You died and I can't sleep at night. You died and left me bare in front of strangers. 
Derek, when we married, you remember I was working at the bank and you were in insurance. We were going to buy a house in Surrey. Perhaps have children. That was in 87, just before the war. And then, in 92, you joined the party. Mrs. Reyna, next door, loaned us food all through the war years. When they dragged her and her children off in separate vans, we didn't intervene. And now you're dead, and I walk home alone each night through riot zones, past looting shootings, burning buildings. Now you're dead, and I crouch like an animal and offer my hindquarters in submission to the world. Now you're dead, and I can't sleep for being scared, for crying, hating, thinking. Who has done this to me? I can't sleep for wanting justice, wanting all the world to know of its unfairness. Can't sleep for the gun beneath my pillow. Tell very much. Thank you very much. You know you won't find anywhere to sleep out here. There's no bed and breakfast anymore. Were you thinking of camping or something like that? Yes, something like that. This is for you, Delia. You more than anybody. I was happy with you. Yes, yes, I was happy with Cynthia and little Paul. But that was ten years ago. I'd gotten over it. I'm doing this for you, Delia. For the country, yes, that too. And for me, of course for me. But you, more than anybody. You're the reason I came here. This is where it started. This is where it ends. Lark Hill Resettlement Camp. V, you're almost finished, aren't you? See for yourself. The pieces are set out before me, perfectly aligned. Complete. One may at last grasp their design, their grand significance. But almost finished? Yes. Yes, I suppose I am. Though recognition's been delayed by its circuitous construction, now the pattern long concealed emerges into view. Is it not fine? Is it not simple and elegant and severe? How strange after the long, exacting toil of preparation that it takes only the slightest effort and less thought to start this brief, elaborate amusement on its breathless, hurtling race. The merest touch, no more and everything falls into place. The pieces can't perceive as we, the mischief, their arrangement tips. Those stolid, law-abiding cues, so pregnant with catastrophe, insensible before the ways, so soon released by callous fate. Affected most, they understand the least. And understanding, when it comes, invariably arrives too late. You say you have a clockwork love who feeds you, cares for you. But I've read all her diaries, and I know that she's untrue. Indeed, they're not, there's, they'll not know anything amiss until they're caught up in the terrible momentum, possibly mistaking it first for bold, decisive action, some last-minute rally to avert disaster, charging to the rescue. But they are not charging. They are falling there, you see them standing with their numbers on their blink, in different faces. Nuremberg in miniatures, the ranks of painted wooded men. Poor little things, poor dominoes. Your pretty empire took so long to build, now with a snap of history's fingers. Down it goes. Leader, I know the terrorist. I know how he's doing it all. First, he knows everything about us and our system. Everything. Then this morning, we find people with subversive poems they claim they received through the post. Leader, he's got us delivering his leaflets for him. How? How is he causing blackouts in Merseyside and food riots in Broome? I know it's unthinkable, Leader, but there's only one answer. He's got access to fate. He's had access to fate since the beginning. That's how he, uh... Leader, what's 